Hey students, welcome to lecture number seven of multiple zeta values and modular forms. So today we want to continue talking about the quasi shuffle algebras. So we are here in um, section two of the, of the lecture and quasi shuffle algebras were introduced last time as a generalization of these spaces H. So this quasi shuffle algebra was an algebra with a, equipped with a product called the quasi shuffle product and this product generalized uh, this Staffel and Shuffle product for these multiple zeta values. And with this more general notion of a product, we were able also to describe the product uh, of this Q series G, which was quite similar to the Staffel product, but we had some, some extra term of lower weight appearing there. And so today we want to continue talking about these quasi shuffle algebras and prove some general results and in the end also talk about the regularization of multiple zeta values. But first, uh, let's do a small review. So K, in our case, is always a field containing Q. A is a countable set, which we call the set of letters. And on A, we have some product denoted by this diamond, <coughs> which is commutative and associative. And the A is a K vector space generated by these elements in A equipped with this product is an algebra and we call this the algebra of letters. And having such, such an A and a diamond, we could define a product on the space of words, words which was given by this non-commutative polynomial ring with variables given by these letters. <coughs> so these are linear k-linear combination of um, words in these letters. And on this we defined this quasi-shuffle product denoted by this asterisk uh, diamond, which on an empty word didn't do anything. And for non-empty words, it was defined recursively like this, which was quite similar to the definition of the Staffel product. But here, um, at this point, we used this diamond product, which um, taking the diamond product of two letters, so A and B are the starting letters of these uh, two words here, and here we uh, combine them using this diamond, which again gives a linear combination of letters. <coughs> okay, and so this then gave a, an algebra, which is commutative, and this is called the quasi-shuffle algebra, or also we refer to this as the algebra of words. And the examples we had were, well, all examples we did were in the case when k is just the rational numbers, and for an arbitrary um, alphabet A, we could we can define uh, this uh, empty uh, diamond product. So we and then we denote the corresponding quasi shuffle product by this uh, shuffle. So this is just the shuffle product. And one um, example we saw is when we take A to be just the the set of these two letters x and y. Then this quasi shuffle algebra was exactly what we. Uh, denoted H shuffle before. And in H shuffle we had some <coughs> subalgebras H1 shuffle and H0 shuffle. And from H0 shuffle we had an algebra homomorphism to the space of multiple zeta values given by this zeta map. And one goal of today's lecture is to, to extend this map um, to the space H1 to get a map from there to there. So we will also define um, these um, so-called shuffle regularized multiple zeta values. And then we have the Staffel product, where as a set of letters we take this, what we denoted AZ. So for each natural number we had one letter, Z1, Z2, and so on. And on this set we define this diamond product by just adding these two, two numbers. And this we denoted by just this star. And then this um, quasi shuffle algebra was basically exactly what we denoted h1 star before and in h1 star we also had the subspace of h0 star which were all the words in here uh, which started with a letter uh, which is greater than one so these are the words not starting in z1 but z2 and so on and these correspond somehow to the admissible indices and similar to this case we also had an an algebra homomorphism to the space of uh, multiple zeta values, and we will also see later how to extend also this map to map to H1 to all indices, and this will then give the Staffel regularized multiple zeta values. So, but one nice feature of this uh, more general notion of a product was that we could also 
um, ex describe the product for our Q-series G. So there we took the same alphabet, because our Q-series G are also uh, defined for an index. And then we defined this and diamond head product for two of these letters by saying, well, this is the same as the Staffel product, but we also add uh, lower weight terms here, where the coefficients are given by these explicit uh, rational numbers. And in the in the smallest depth case, so these rational numbers came by uh, multiplying this Q series G, and um, so somehow in the proof of the, the Staffel product for this Q series G, these numbers appeared. But then we saw last time that in general, um, we, if we define, so this is now a new notation, so first I want to denote the quasi-shuffle product corresponding to this diamond head by just uh, asterisk head, and then this h1 asterisk head uh, is given by the uh, quasi-shuffle algebra with this product, and what we saw is that this map g, which sends the word uh, like this just to the corresponding uh, q-series g, is an algebra homomorphism. Okay, and so the first thing we want to um, discuss today um, are linear maps which are induced by a power series. And one goal is to explain this following result, which we will not prove, but I want to explain this. Namely that if we fix um, a set of letters, then all quasi-shuffle algebras over this set of letters, no matter what the diamond is, and they are all isomorphic to each other. And there are explicit isomorphism between uh, these different quasi-shuffle algebras. So let's um, um, explain this result with an example. So we had that this zeta map is an algebra homomorphism from the space. Uh, so this is basically H1 Staffel. So now we don't uh, uh, we don't worry about convergence because everything I'm going to say also works for this truncated version uh, zeta m. But we had some um, algebra homomorphism from this um, um, quasi shuffle algebra where the product is given by the Staffel product. So this just meant in small depths that, for example, the product of these uh, two Riemann zeta values is given by, by this sum here. But also if I take depths 1 times depths 2, then the Staffel product formula is given by this. And now let's assume, or the question I want to propose now is, having such an object, can we now define a new object which uh, doesn't satisfy the Staffel product formula, but the, on the same alphabet, the Shuffle product, which here means that we take the, the index Shuffle. So in other words, can we construct an algebra homomorphism S from this quasi-shuffle algebra to the real numbers. So what does what this mean for this object? Uh, so in small depths, this would mean that this S should satisfy the following formula. So for example, S in depths 1 should be just this, because this is exactly uh, the shuffle product of these um, uh, two words. And the shuffle product of this with this is given by this formula here. So we somehow want to, in this case here, want to remove this factor uh, and want to somehow plug this into, into these uh, death 2 objects. So let's make an ansatz by saying, well, in, in depth 1, let's say sk1, um, we just say it's zeta uh, k1. So here the, the left hand sides are the same. But if I multiply it out, I get I get this formula here. So therefore, I want to put this uh, in there and in there with a factor one half. So with this, uh, one choice for def two would be that we say def two is we take the double zeta value and then plus one half zeta k one plus k two. And if you define the S like this, then you see that this satisfies this formula here because of this formula here. And now for def3, so what should we do with def3 to get this formula here? So somehow the left hand side is already fixed. So if I multiply this with this here, so I multiply these two guys, 
I can use these two formulas and see if I would do the following. So if I say s in depth 3 is so s k1 k2 k3 is well I take again the zeta value so here if I multiply this with this meaning I multiply this with this uh, then here I, I already get the, these leading terms but what I want to add now is also uh, one half zeta k1 plus k2 k3 plus one half zeta k1 k2 k3 and if you multiply this out you see that you need one fixed of zeta k1 plus k2 plus uh, k3 to make this formula here work. So if you plug this in this formula here and using this you will see that uh, this actually works out. And maybe one way to see this fix here, it's not fix, it's uh, 3 factorial, and here this is actually 2 factorial and 2 factorial. So, so somehow these, um, these factorials, so this 1 over n factorial is the coefficient of this series here, the exponential minus 1, so this if I call this f, this is 1 factorial and n runs from 1 to infinity, uh, t to the n, and what we will uh, define now, or later in a second, we will, starting with a, with a power series like this, we want to define a linear map from this space uh, to this space, or the other way around, so, so we will define a Psi f, psi f, which is a linear map from the space of words to the space of words. And then we will see that this f, this s we have above, can be seen as a um, composition of, of this map here with uh, the zeta map. And we will see that this, in this special case here, this psi f we will define will be an algebra homomorphism from this space uh, to this space. And we will see later in the definition of this psi and in this special example that what we basically do is exactly uh, this construction here. So this um, can be seen as some motivation uh, why this fancy psi we will define in a second uh, actually makes sense. But before we can define this, uh, we need to introduce um, some notation. So first um, we want to introduce this, the following here. So if we have a word, w, which consists of the letters a1 up to an, so these a, i are in, in our set a. So this is a word of length um, l of w, n, so we have n letters. And now we consider a composition of n, which we denote by i, and the comp composition of n means just a uh, number of words, i1 to im, which add up to n, and these i's are greater or equal to 1. And then, having such a composition and a word of length l, then we define i of this word. So this um, is now given by this here, and what this means is we take this word here, and the first number in this composition says that we should um, take the diamond product of the first i1 uh, letters, and then uh, concatenate it with the next i2 letters, where we take the diamond product, and so on. And so, and this i it depends on this diamond product, but we now assume that we always have just a fixed uh, diamond uh, and a set A, so we will not um, uh, use this uh, notation here, So, but it's important to notice that this I actually depends on the diamond, of course. So uh, let's do an example. So if W is, uh, let's say, A1, A2, A3, A4, so this is the case n equals 4. So 
we need to find a composition of set number 4 and for example uh, 1, 2, 1, 1 would be a composition uh, well of course this is not a composition <laughs> uh, this is a composition because 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4 so in this case um, what is um, i of this word well, it says that I need to take the diamond product of the first letter with itself, but this is just uh, a1. But here now I take the diamond product of the next two letters, so I take the diamond product a2 with a3, and then just a4. <coughs> okay, and another composition, so maybe let's call this i1 and i2. For example, if I take 2, 2, then I2 oops, of this W is A1 diamond A2. So this gives a linear combination of letters. And this I um, concatenate, or I just use a, yeah, concatenate these two letters with A3 diamond A4. And these are also words. In this case, the word has length 3, and in this case, the word has a length 2. Okay, and then um, what we denote by Cn is a set of all, of all composition of n. And with this, we can now define what we mean by this psi f. So this is uh, the definition. So we start with the formal power series, which doesn't have a constant term, so it starts at 1 here, and it has coefficient in our field k. So it's an element in this space here. And for such an f, we want to define a k-linear map from the space of words to the space of words, where we define this psi f on the empty word to be just uh, the empty word, and for non-empty word W, what we take is the sum over all compositions of this um, of the length of this word, and then we take the the coefficients of this power series uh, at these i1, i2, and so on, and then we take this word here, which corresponds to this composition. So here's an example. Uh, if I apply this psi f to a word of length. 2, then, um, well, what are the compositions of 2? So C2 is um, 1, 1, or 2. So here you see this composition, uh, this is I of this composition, 1, 1, and I take the coefficient C1 times C1, so I have C1 squared, and here I have the composition um, where I just have a 2 here, so this means I take the diamond product of the first two letters, which, which are all letters here, and I take the coefficient C2. And the set C3, so if I consider psi f of a word of length 3, I need to think about the compositions of 3, so it's 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, and 3, and then you see that uh, since we take the sum over all of them, we get these uh, four summons. So the first one is uh, just, again, the, the word, and we have C1 uh, cube here. So notice that we always have this composition 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 which just gives the original word, and the coefficient <coughs> is C1 uh, to the power of n. And then here, 2, 1, and 1, 2, both have the coefficient C1, C2. And here, 2, 1 gives this word, and 1, 2 gives this word, and the last one is we take the diamond of everything and we take the coefficient C3. Okay, and so for example, <clears throat> if we take F to be the just a T, so meaning uh, C1 is 1 and uh, Cj is 0 for J uh, greater than, than 1, then we have this. So what is um, psi f of a word? 
Well, we just have the, um, if we look at the sum here, then all these c's are zero except when these i's are all one. So the only um, composition which gives a contribution to the sum is always this one, 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 one. And this just gives the word and the coefficient is uh, c1 to the power n and c1 is one here. So in this case, this just gives back the word. So in other words, this uh, cf is just the identity on this space uh, of words. So we get the identity if we choose for our power series just this t here. Okay, and now we want to um, show uh, a nice statement for these um, for these maps which are attached uh, to power series, which is the following, namely if I take uh, two power series f and g, then the statement is that the composition, if I first apply um, psi g and then apply psi f, this is the same as I would apply psi of um, the composition of f and g, and this here, so this f circle g, so this is also a power series, which is just that I plug uh, the composition of f and g, which means that, um, oops, this means that this of t is just f of, and I plug in g of t there. So, yeah, so the composition of um, power series here corresponds to the composition of these linear maps. And uh, also notice that this this t we had before, um, so if, if one of these power series is just t, so for example if g is just t, then t is a neutral element with respect to this composition of power series. Um, so, um, so somehow if I have two um, power series which are inverse to each other, so where the composition just gives the t, then I also see that these psi corresponding to these two power series are inverse to each other. And one important example um, for this is what we discussed before, namely if I take this power series here, so then the inverse with respect to the composition uh, is, is given by, by the logarithm of log uh, 1 plus t, so this is this power series here, so if you plug this g into this you just get t, so here in this case, so this means that psi of this f is the inverse of the psi of this g, because here this gives uh, the identity on the right hand side. And because of this, um, so these will be important functions, so they will get special names. So this psi f will be um, called exp. So exp is a, well, because it comes from the exponential, well, there's a minus one, but we just follow the notation of, um, uh, of Hoffman here. So this will give a, a map, a linear map from the words, from the space of words to the space of words. And psi g, this we will denote by 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 log, and this is uh, the inverse of this. So here in this direction, we have the log uh, because of this identity here. So these two linear maps are inverse to each other, and yes. So yeah, maybe one word. So to see the proof of this, you can, for example, look at the paper of um, Hoffman and Ihara. So we will not give the proof here. But it's a quite explicit um, calculation where you need to, to use this definition here and you need to see what happens if I take the composition of two power series and but we will 
we will not give this proof here. And now the statement um, we want to, to make is um, that these two maps are exactly um, doing what we did in the introduction, namely the map exp. So both of them are linear maps, but now the statement is that that exp, if I take the quasi-shuffle algebra with respect to the shuffle product and I apply this exp, then this will give an element here. And the statement is that this map is not just a linear map, it's actually an algebra homomorphism, where now on this side we have the quasi-shuffle product. And then because of the statement before, the logarithm goes in the other direction, so here we have this quasi-shuffle product, and we get um, that this is an algebra homomorphism to this space of words with respect to the shuffle product. And uh, so, so now, um, why does this have to do with the introduction? Because here, um, if you look at this example here, so what if we take um, A to be AZ and the diamond, we just take um, that I plus J and F we take the X T minus one, then um, this Psi, let's call it ZK1, ZK2, ZK3, is exactly ZK1, ZK2, ZK3, plus one half, so here we have one and one over two factorial, that K1 plus K2, that K3, plus that K1, sorry, I don't make this here, that K2 plus K3, plus 1 over 3 factorial that k1 plus k2 plus k3. And if you look at this formula here, so um, so I mean this is now exp, exp of the word that k1, that k2, that k3, and the statement before was that this exp is an algebra homomorphism. Well, in this case now it's an algebra homomorphism from K, A, Z with a shuffle product, uh, sorry, with a shuffle product to K, A, Z with a shuffle product. So this is uh, the statement of the, of the theorem here, because now we choose the diamond to be the, the diamond of the shuffle product. So if you look at this here and compare it now with uh, with our construction here, we see exactly that uh, this gives the same formula. Um, so this psi f, which is now this exponential, if we would compose this with zeta, then our corresponding s would be exactly given by this formula here. Okay. And also here, uh, we will not give the proof, but this you can find in the paper of Hoffman. So there are two papers, oh, well, I think in, in total there are three papers by Hoffman on quasi-shuffle algebras, and the first paper on quasi-shuffle algebra uh, deals with this theorem here, and the second paper, the joint work with Ihara, you can find this statement. But there's also a newer version on quasi-shuffle algebras and applications, so I recommend you to, to read all three of them. Okay, so, so now uh, we want to prove another fact on, on these um, linear maps psi f. So, so what we want to prove is this proposition here. So the statement is that if we take some of these power series to which we can assign such, such a linear map, and now we take another power series which has coefficients uh, in, in words, and letters, so this is, these are letters, and then we have the following equality in, in this space here, so formal power series with coefficients in words, 
So in what we do, we apply this psi f to this geometric series here, and this equals 1 over 1 minus f of diamond. And f of diamond um, we defined last time, but maybe first. Uh, so let's give f some name here. So if the power series f is defined by this, then um, this f of diamond here was that we plug in um, this object into this t here, and this diamond here told us what we should do uh, with this z to the power of i. So in this example here, this is, since we choose the diamond, this means we have here the sum ci, and here now we have this z diamond with z um, x to the i, and here we have i times the diamond product. And here the diamond product we extended uh, to the space of power series where we just apply the diamond uh, coefficient wise and this x uh, commutes uh, with these things so so we get this thing here. And this um, where this is now an element also in uh, k a x. Well actually it's, it doesn't have a constant term so we could also write a x here. And here uh, this uh, 1 over uh, this, so this geometric series here, um, this we understand as an element here where now the product we use to evaluate this ju is just given by the non-commutative um, multiplication in this, in this polynomial ring here. So in particular this means that this thing here, what we plug in here is 1 plus zx plus zz x squared plus zz z x cube uh, and so on. So this is just the, the concatenation of elements here. So this is now an element in this space of words because here we concatenate uh, letters. But this here is really uh, the coefficients are diamonds of letters. So this is really um, given by uh, the coefficients are letters and which are also words, but uh, it's just a subspace in this here. Okay, so now let's uh, prove this. And for this, we look at the following. So we first uh, evaluate uh, the left-hand side. So as I said, what we plug in into this psi f here is given by this here, so this z squared means z that, and this z cubed means z z z. And now we want to apply the psi f to, to this power series here, where this psi f uh, just is defined uh, component wise here on this power series uh, in x. So this means we need to apply psi f to these words z and z z and z z z. So this means, so here psi f is applied to the constant so to the empty word, which is uh, 1. And here we now, for each uh, exponent n, we take the sum over all exponents of this z, and then we take the sum over all um, compositions of n, because this word z to the n has length n, and then we need to take the i of this z to the n, and here we take the coefficients of f uh, corresponding to this uh, composition. <clears throat> and uh, well, what what is uh, well what is i of uh, that n? So it's uh, I take z diamond 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 z, and then concatenate it with z diamond 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 z, and so on. And the number of diamonds I have here is exactly uh, i one. So I can split this up here and say I take a sum first over i1 where I take i1s of these uh, diamonds, so I somehow put this outside in a separate sum, and the rest is then a sum where I now take the sum over compositions of words of length n minus i1, and here I have the coefficient starting in ci1, and here I have now uh, 
well, I, I removed these I1s there. And this sum we need to understand. In, in the case when n equals uh, I1, we should understand this as being 1, so not 0. And also here this sum actually just goes uh, to, um, sorry, uh, to n. Otherwise this sum is 0. But I want what I want to point out here is that this part here is exactly um, this, this f diamond. And this part here is um, exactly again this, this psi f here, where we also include uh, this constant here. So this is again just um, psi, psi f. Uh, so what we get is uh, exactly what we want, namely that um, this psi f of this part here is 1 plus, and then our f here, f diamond zx times again um, psi f. And this um, then implies exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, and now um, we want to consider a special case of this proposition, which will give a proof of a statement uh, we did last time of these um, exponential of these repeating words. So we now want to consider uh, the special case of this theorem. So here again, this of this proposition. So here again, the statement of the proposition. And now we again take the exponential as our example. And recall in this case this psi f is this exponential which is an algebra homomorphism from the shuffle to the quasi shuffle. And now uh, what is this? So again <coughs> this we had before this is zx plus zx squared plus zx cubed but this we can rewrite. Well, this is 1 plus this is uh, zx. But the word zz um, we could also think of being z shuffle z, which is 2 times zz. So if we take one half of this, then uh, we get the same. Similar here, oops, we could add the shuffle. x cube, and then we need to divide out a 3 factorial here. So in other words, what this is, this is just the exp um, shuffle of zx, because this is the definition of this expression here. We're taking the, the power series, plug in zx, and how we evaluate this z is given by this uh, product here, and in this case we take the shuffle product. Okay, so so therefore, so this is what we plug in into this psi f. So we plug in the exponential of with respect to the shuffle product into psi f, but psi f gives an algebra homomorphism from the shuffle to the quasi shuffle. So therefore. Uh, we see that psi f in our case of this 1 over 1 minus zx, so this is exponential of this. Well, it could be confusing now because there are now a lot of different exponentials, so this x without anything is is this linear map here, and this x with, with, with this is uh, this power series here. But this is then, because this is an algebra homomorphism, we can change this shuffle into this quasi-shuffle. So this is just the exp of the quasi-shuffle of zx. So in other words, what we get is this formula here. So the left-hand side here of the proposition is now given by this. We have it here. And since for our f um, we use the exponential, we have here the exponential of the diamond product. And this is true for all that power series um, where the coefficients are words. 
So, um, so in particular, this statement here also holds. If we replace uh, these parts here, we can replace by, by any element uh, which doesn't have a constant. So we could replace it by any. So true for for any power series with coefficients uh, with coefficients given by by letters. So if we choose. So in particular, what we can choose is uh, the logarithm with respect to the diamond, that x. And if you plug this here, then we see the exponential with diamond and the logarithm with diamond are inverse to each other. So what we get is exactly the statement we had last time, that the exponential of the sh quasi shuffle product of the logarithm with the diamond, well here I need uh, 1 plus, is exactly given by by this 1 over 1 minus zx. Yes. So and now um, we want to come to this um, regularization of multiple zeta values. So we want to make sense for uh, of multiple zeta values, for example, for elements in H1 um, stuffel. And, uh, but so far, this was just possible for H0 stuffel. And H0 stuffel was the subspace of H1 stuffel of linear combination of words which did not start in Z1. And what we will see is that this H1 is actually given as a polynomial ring with coefficients in A0 star in this variable uh, Z1. And this statement uh, we want to generalize uh, in a moment by saying that if we have some quasi shuffle algebra, then in under certain uh, um, circumstances, this is a polynomial ring in where the coefficients are have some restriction on the starting letter, and the put the variable here will be this starting letter. And to make sense of this, we will first define um, some subalgebras with restricted starting and restricted uh, end letters. So, what we want to consider are subalgebras, which I denote by Q, E, S. So, S and E denote uh, subsets of A, and this should stand for the starting letters, and E should stand for the end letters. And by Q, we just now denote our space of words. And what we want to define is QES, which is given by where we include the empty word. And then we take all words A1 up to AN, where A1 is in S, the stuff in the middle is in A, and the last letter is in E. So in other words, what we consider is um, Q plus SQE. And yeah, so for example, uh, so what we had before is a is a uh, z z one two well there's no end here and uh, and s was z two z three and so on then in this case um, our h one was just uh, Q and H0 was Q with this uh, restriction on the starting letters. So here, with this notation, I, I would need to write A here, but just oh, if, if S or E is A, we just uh, leave it out. So H0 in this case is uh, QS, meaning um, I just allow starting letters, which starts in Z2. So in other words, I don't allow Z1 in the starting letter. And then the first statement for these um, subspaces, so these are just uh, k case sub vector spaces of, of our space of words. But if these um, um, algebras of letters 
are subalgebras of Ka diamonds. So in other words, if I take the diamond product of elements in S, then this is again a linear combination of letters in S. And if I take it a diamond of letters in E, the, if they are again linear combination of letters in E, then this um, subspace here, QES, is a subalgebra of our quasi shuffle algebra, where the product here is given by the quasi shuffle product. And uh, well, but this is quite uh, follows directly by the definition of the quasi shuffle product. So, for example, if A and B are in S, then of course these words also start with letters in, in S. And here, because S is closed under the diamond product, this will also give a linear combination of um, letters in S. And also for the ending letter, you can check that if W and V here start with letters in E, then inductively you see that here also the end letters start in E. And in the case when, when, when this is an empty word, we also get the diamond as an as a end letter of some word. And there you also need to use the fact that this space of uh, end letters is a subalgebra of the space of letters. Uh, and for example, uh, in this case here, for the usual Staffel product, you can check that this is the case, because if I take the, the diamond of these letters here, so where I add the indices, then this is of course a subalgebra, because adding numbers greater than equal to 2 gives a number greater than equal to 2. And now um, we want to to give a statement like this, um, but in a more general form concerning these uh, more general subalgebras. So the statement is the following. So assume we have subalgebras um, S, uh, KS, and uh, KE of our algebra of letters. And now we have uh, a letter in in A such that if I take the diamond of something without A, with anything, then again this will give a linear combination of letters which do not include A. And the one example you should always think of here is when A, for example, is Z1 and our A, capital A, is, uh, uh, is the, the Z alphabet and we use our our Staffel diamond here. Then for example you can see this statement here. Uh, if I take a ZK where K is greater than 1, take it with any Z, also with Z1, then this will give just a ZK greater or equal to 1. So this is a example where, where for example this condition holds. And then the statement is if this A is also uh, an end letter, then the subalgebra QE, so all words ending in E, can be written as a polynomial where a polynomial in A with respect to the quasi shuffle product, where the coefficients are given by words which do not start in A. So here this is always with respect to the to the quasi shuffle. And more for uh, further, we have a, an isomorphism of uh, k-algebras of this QE, which is a k-algebra with respect uh, to the quasi-shuffle product, to this uh, polynomial algebra here, where the coefficients are given by this, and this here is also a quasi-shuffle algebra, or subalgebra of our uh, QE, where we send this a to the variable t. So more precisely, this map, what, what we mean by this, is that if I have a word here, a word in QE, then the first statement is QE is given by, I can write it as a polynomial with coefficients not starting in A, in A. So in other words, I can write this W as a sum of some coefficients WI. So WI is uh, is a word not starting in, in small a 
and here I take now the quasi shuffle product of A and here I take the power with respect to the quasi shuffle product. So this is A quasi shuffle, A quasi shuffle and so on. So this is how I can write this element on this side here and this map here, so pole of this, what we mean by this, we send this to the polynomial with the coefficients w i and here we take uh, t to the i. And this is now an element. Uh, this is now an element here. So this is how you should read uh, this formula here and yeah. And the statement is that this is an isomorphism of k algebras. And then also we have somehow the, the mirrored uh, statement that if a is a uh, in the set S, then the space of words starting in letters in S can be written as a polynomial where the coefficients are starting with S but do not end in A and it's a polynomial in this A with the same uh, map here. Okay, so let's uh, prove this. So we will just prove number one. So um, we want so we want to show that this equals this. And if we have a word here, then any word which ends in e can be written as uh, a to the m and v. So m is uh, greater or equal to, to 0. And now we collect all a's at the beginning of this word w. So in other words, this v um, shouldn't start. So this v shouldn't start in a. So this is now in q a which without a uh, e. And this we will also write uh, b1 up to b. So in other words, uh, B1 uh, is not A, and BL is an E. So clearly any word in this space here can be written like this. So if, it, if the word starts with no A, then the M is zero, and then it's in this space here. And otherwise I can always collect all A's, and then the rest is a word which does not start in A. And now we want to show this statement here by induction on M. So induction, induction on M. So and uh, well, M equals zero is uh, this statement is clear because if N equals zero, I don't have an A, and then this W is just this V, which is already given by this word here. So in particular it's a polynomial where it's just a constant here uh, in this space here. So uh, we now uh, do induction step. So the m equals zero case uh, is uh, clear. And now um, what we con want to consider is what happens if I take the quasi shuffle product of a with um, so we do one example and then the general thing becomes clear. So let's assume, so this is uh, here m equals uh, 2 and here I have, uh, this is a v. So if I take the quasi shuffle product of this, then this a can be at this position, this position and this position. So this gives uh, 3 times a cube b1, b2 plus and then this a could be there or there. So in other words, this is a squared b1. And here I have a b2 plus b2 a. And then there's a case where I need to take the diamond of a with these a's. So I have a diamond a. 
a b1 b2 then I have a a diamond a b1 b2 plus and then I need to take the diamond of a with with these b's so here I have a squared is still in front b1 diamond a b2 plus a squared b1 a diamond b2 so this is how this uh, quasi shuffle product looks like and now what we want to show is um, so this should be a part of the induction step and here we now have a word which starts with um, three a's so this is the case uh, m equals three and we now want to show that all the rest um, has smaller m so so here well we have m equals 2 here we have m equals 2 and we want to use the induction hypothesis that um, that these words um, can already be written as a polynomial like this and um, so, and we start with an arbitrary word like this in this case with three uh, a's in front so here um, in particular this b2 is the same as this one so um, so in particular um, this b2 so here this b2 is in e so this also ends in e so here we can use the induction hypothesis and here we also have m equals 2 and here the last letters are also in e because b2 is in e and here this a is also in e because this was one of the conditions we had here so this part here um, is also here with a with a smaller m so therefore this is also a polynomial uh, like this and now here <coughs> here um, the m is also 2 or even smaller because I have one a here and here I get a linear combination of words which might include uh, a so here I have smaller m and also I end in a letter in e here I also end in letter with e and I have smaller m so here uh, these m's are smaller equal to 2 so here m is 2 and b b2 is here at the end here I have m equals 2 b2 is in e so m equals 2 here is also m equals 2 and here um, I now take the diamond of um, a with uh, b2 uh, so uh, yeah so in particular uh, this means because e is closed under the diamond product this will also be in uh, this is also in e because b2 is in e so we see that this, if we put everything on the other side, could be written as a polynomial by using the induction hypothesis in this space here. And in general, um, so if we start with a general element um, AMV, so this is an arbitrary W, we could consider the A, um, the quasi shuffle product was AM minus 1V. Um, then we have this part here which corresponds to this part here. So this part here is just the, the shuffle of A with, with the rest of these Bs. Uh, here we have um, this part here, and here we have this part here. And with the same argument as in this case, the ending letters and the starting letters are always uh, what we want. Um, yes. And also, uh, maybe this is also important here, b1 diamond a this doesn't give a linear combination which contains a because this is exactly this condition here the b is now an arbitrary element in a uh, uh, sorry the b1 this is important so uh, b1 is not doesn't contain a 
because b1 was the beginning of this v, so it's in particular it's not uh, a. So uh, so if we take the product with a diamond, then we also get something which doesn't contain a, and therefore this doesn't contain a, and therefore the m is re really two here, and it doesn't get increased. Okay, so one consequence of this uh, proposition, or maybe first uh, another comment, of course. Um, so this proves proves this fact here, and then we need to check that this representation is actually uh, unique. But this is actually quite clear because there are no relations among words. And if I have a polynomial like this uh, in this A, then for example, if I look at the part um, M, WM here, and I take the quasi shuffle product with A to the quasi shuffle M, then this is the only part where I can get uh, M A's in front. And um, if this would be the zero polynomial, this would in particular then mean imply that this Wm needs to be zero, and therefore this map is actually well defined. And we get that this, uh, because this representation as a polynomial is unique, and we get that this is an algebra homomorphism. And, um, and also, uh, number two, we didn't prove now, but it's exactly the same argument, but instead of talking about A at the beginning, well, we would talk about A being at the end, and then uh, it's uh, the same proof, but looked from the other uh, side. Okay, and one consequence of this um, theorem is the following corollary, namely that um, H1 shuffle is a polynomial in, in Y, shuffle H0, and also um, that H shuffle is a polynomial in H shuffle 1. Um, so here, For the first statement, for example, this. So here the, we have the alphabet uh, x, y. And uh, so uh, here we have the words ending in y. So h1 is um, q. Q was uh, well, Q is okay, A, and H one is the ones um, ending in Y, so E is uh, Y, and by the theorem before, this is um, Q E A minus um, um, Y. So this y is in E, polynomial in y, and this is exactly um, the ones which do not start in y, so the, the, these are the ones starting in, in x, so this is h0, uh, zero. h0 zero shuffle. And similar argument we can use uh, to, to prove uh, this statement uh, here, but then we use number two of the theorem and we take x, and here number two, uh, there we take a to be a z. So, so here in this example, uh, our a was y, and here our a we take uh, z one. And also the first statement, uh, so h one is, so in this case we take e to be everything, and uh, then see that any word with no restriction can be written as a polynomial with the restriction that it shouldn't start in Z1. And for number three, so here we now have um, the, the asterisk hat, so this fancy product coming from this Q series G, so here I recall this was given by this. And there we also um, take um, the same as, as here, but there uh, we need to, to check that these conditions are actually true. So maybe here, so in this theorem here, we need to check that this condition is satisfied. So if we take the diamond of something which is not that one with something which is anything, then we need to check that this is always a linear combination of letters which do not include that one. <coughs> 
So we need to check this formula if I take, um, if one of them is not z1 and the other is anything, then I will not have any z1 on this side here. So for this, this is clear, but here it could happen that, um, that for j equals 1, I actually get some contribution here. But, <coughs> but in the case j equals 1, this, this coefficient here is given by, by this formula. So maybe let me remind you of the explicit formula for lambda. Then you see that uh, the sum here of these coefficients, so the coefficient of z1 is given by this formula here. And now k1 and k2, if they have different parity, then this thing here is 0. But if they have the same parity, this means that k1 plus k2 is even. And because we just need to consider the case um, when one of them is not z1, this means that k1 plus k2 is greater or equal to 3. And greater or equal to 3 and even means that k1 plus k2 minus 1 is greater or equal to 3 and odd. And these Bernoulli numbers for odd numbers greater or equal to 3 vanish. And therefore this coefficient uh, is always 0. And therefore this thing here does not have any z1 in the case when one of these k's is not z1. And you really get just z1 if, if both of them are z1. <coughs> and then we, we use the same, uh, uh, we use the same uh, a and e here to prove this statement here. Okay, so <coughs> let me give you an example. So <coughs> so I choose the word z1, z1, z2. And now I express it as a polynomial uh, using these three products. And here one needs to be a little bit careful in the first. So here one should really think of, um, because I take the shuffle product with respect to the alphabet x and y. Um, so what I mean by this is really this um, y, y, uh, x, uh, y. And then one can see that um, this y, y, x, y is given here by x, y as a coefficient shuffle y, um, shuffle y. And here the coefficient is uh, x, y, y. And then this word here. And for the usual Stafford product, we can also write it as a polynomial. Uh, so again, this is now a polynomial with coefficient in a0 in z1. And these coefficients, you can check they are all in h0 because they do not start with z1. And for our uh, product from this, this, this head product, we have a similar formula. But here you see the coefficients, they are also in h0, but um, with a head. But they also include um, some lower weight things here. And these two, we will now use to define uh, the shuffle and the stuffle regularized uh, multiple zeta values. And um, so the, the idea here is that we will define, for example, a zeta shuffle of z1, z1, z2. So this means this is a, um, the multiple zeta value for the index 1, 1, 2, which is, uh, so this word is not an h0. But we have this equality here, and the coefficients are in h0. And for h0, we can really define the multiple zeta value. So what we will do is we take this polynomial expression here, and then we take this coefficient. So here is z2, which corresponds to zeta2, and then take this. Um, we take a variable t, and so here we have uh, one half zeta2 t squared minus two times uh, zeta2 one t plus 3 times zeta 2, 1, 1. And similar, we will also do this for the Staffel, taking this, um, uh, this polynomial here and uh, write it as a polynomial in t, and the coefficients are, uh, for them, we can really make sense of the multiple zeta value. And this is uh, what we want to do now. So first, um, by our corollary, 
we can get um, algebra isomorphisms from the space h1 bullet to h0 bullet in the variable t, where bullet is now either stuffle or shuffle. So we get a map from there to there. And what we want to define is these shuffle regularized and stuffle regularized uh, zeta maps, which go from h1 to the space of multiple zeta values, but now with a, as a polynomial where the coefficients are given by multiple zeta values. And we define this map just as the composition of these two maps, where here we apply the zeta map to the coefficients of this polynomial here, because the coefficients here correspond to admissible indices for which these multiple zeta values are defined. And this is exactly the, um, so let me put this here, the definition here. So the shuffle regularized multiple zeta values we denote by zeta shuffle of some index k in a variable t, so which we also write like this. And this will be defined as the image of the word z corresponding to this index here. And often in the literature you will find just the case when t equals to zero and then one says that this is a shuffle regularized uh, multiple zeta value which we just denote by zeta shuffle of some index k. And this is now here and if we set t equals to zero so this is really a linear combination of multiple zeta values. And similar we define the stuff of regularized multiple zeta values uh, as the image of this map here applied to this word zk, which is again a polynomial with uh, coefficients as multiple zeta values. And also in the case uh, t equals zero, we just write zeta star or zeta asterisk k. And here we have uh, the examples coming from before. So here this I wrote down, the zeta shuffle 1, 1, 2 is exactly given by this polynomial here and zeta staffel 1, 1, 2 is given by this polynomial here. And if you look at this, this they look different and they are indeed different, even though this coefficient and this coefficient is the same. And here the coefficient is two times zeta one. And here it's zeta one, uh, zeta two times zeta two one, and here it's zeta two one plus uh, zeta three. We know that zeta three equals zeta two one, so this, these two coefficients are actually also the same. But here these coefficients are not the same, but um, the difference of these two are given by some products of single zeta values. And this comparison between these two, so first notice they are really different. But next time we will see that there's an explicit comparison between these two regularized uh, multiple zeta values and the difference here can be made explicit. And this comparison will give us also a family of linear relations and um, which will then lead to the so-called extended double shuffle relations, which will generalize our finite double shuffle relations we discussed before. So what we will see is that if I have two words, so first recall, if I have two words in H0, then zeta of the word, first word shuffle minus the word w stuffle v. So we saw this is zero. But um, what we will see is that if w is not in h0 but in h1, where then this expression here is not in h0 anymore, in, it's in h1, so we need to regularize this expression. So we can take one of these regularization and we will see that this actually will also give uh, zero. So we get a linear combination of multiple zeta values because both of them, if you look at the coefficients or if you look just as a constant term, give uh, multiple zeta values and this will be called the uh, extended double shuffle relations. And this we will do next time. And the big conjecture is that all linear relations among multiple zeta values come from these uh, extended double shuffle relations. See you then.